Hello, welcome back. I'm Noreen Burke, owner of Call Clutter Fairy Home Organizing, and this is my YouTube channel, The Crafty Organizer. I love bringing you tips on organizing, decluttering, DIYing, upcycling, the occasional craft, and product review. But today, I want to go over some of my favorite projects that I've done for myself over the years, whether it be gifts for others, items I did for my own home, but especially Halloween and Christmas items. Let's go. I am truly like a kid when it comes to the holidays. I love everything about it. As soon as things start coming out in the summer, I get excited. And I've learned through time to wait and be patient so that I don't get bored with the holidays once they're really here if I decorated too soon. So I've been holding off on doing anything for the holidays until after Halloween. But Halloween is so close so I'm gonna bridge the two holidays by showing you some of my favorite costumes that I've made for myself and for my kids over the years and then also just a few other items. So some of these were made before I even started the Crafty Organizer. Like this was a fun diaper cake that I made for a coworker who was about to have her first child. And I gave her gift cards inside of it, but I thought this little diaper was so cute. And I'd seen this on Pinterest and had to try it. As you know, I love doing upcycle. So this cabinet door that was gonna go into a landfill became a great chalkboard. We use it for our ping pong table. I like finding items that give me inspiration, especially if they're out of my budget, and then making it for myself, like this produce basket. I also really liked this trio of frames, so I decided to go ahead and duplicate that inexpensively. Now, crafting is totally up my alley. I'm not a cook. I don't enjoy cooking. I'll do it because I'm obligated to feed myself and my children, but I definitely don't enjoy it. As you can see here in this Easter basket I tried to make, it was edible, but it definitely didn't match the Pinterest picture and I wish I had what it was supposed to look like. So I stick to my crafting. <laughs> Grandin Road, I love looking at their things because talk about inspiration. I am always, always unable to buy anything that they have though because it's definitely out of my budget. These topiaries are a perfect example. $279 each for this topiary, but I loved it. I went to my dollar store and here's what I got. I got two matching bowls, two matching vases, and then I got two bowls that were wider at the base with a lid, and the lid becomes important here in a second. I used E6000 and hot glue to attach them and then spray painted them. And the bottom where the lid is is where I fill it when I use them with either rocks or rice or something heavy to anchor it, but I can empty it when I go to put it away so I'm not storing something super heavy. Also from my Dollar Tree, I got some of their little pumpkins that I used for picks. I didn't want to spend money on the bigger pumpkins, so I got two of the jack-o'-lanterns for trick-or-treating. I just put the face towards the back and polka-dotted them so it matched my theme. I got some inexpensive garland and spray painted it black and attached it. This is where I spent the most money. I got a lot of floral picks from Michaels and here was my finished project. For everything that I spent, again, their version was $2.79 each. Mine were $30 for the both of the topiaries. I was very proud of this project. I did this one probably five or six years ago and I still use them. Now here's where I really like being creative is costumes. My kids and I love dressing up for Halloween and I'm actually disappointed that this year I have no reason to dress up so there won't be a costume. But we have very much enjoyed dressing up over the years and I really like making costumes. So can you guess what this one is? I'll give you five seconds. Did you guess yet? I was 50 shades of gray. <laughs> the book was really popular when I did this costume and I cracked myself up. I went to the store and got a bunch of paint chips sliced them up, made a wig out of newspaper, of course, because that's gray, and more paint chips, cracked me up. 
I always go for more comedic costumes like this one, and if you're on my Facebook or a Patreon, you'd already seen this one, but this was the year I turned 40, so I went as Cougar Barbie, of course. On the back, I had a list of other Barbies that could be coming, like Tattoo Barbie or Cat Lady Barbie. There was a whole list, and I went for the comedic effect. I never try and offend anyone, so please go with the jolly of this. I just, I like the comedic style costumes. And then at the very bottom there was a warning because I was Cougar Barbie that it was for men only between the ages of 21 and 25 or something silly like that. This is for a friend of mine. Her son wanted to go as an Apple iPhone so I made a costume that he could easily put on and take off. But the box idea got my kids going and they loved challenging me. This one is by far my favorite. My oldest wanted to go as a vending machine. So I got some other ideas from robot costumes and we made a partition in the front that actually held real candy. I took apart a keyboard that I got at a thrift store so that the buttons would actually work. And then everything else was a sticker but we made it really dimensional so it looked like there was a real slot for money. And then my youngest, whoa, this one was tough. She wanted to be one of those claw machines that you put money in to get a prize. So on this one, we made an actual claw out of headbands. We got a bunch of small stuffed animals from, I think we did it from the uh, Oriental Trader. And then I actually made a joystick and I can't even remember how I did that. But I was so proud of these costumes. They were a total hit as my kids were trick-or-treating, and I actually wish I had saved them, but how do you store big costumes like this? So when we were all done, we just dismantled them and recycled them. I very much like making small things to give to friends and neighbors. This was out of paint chips, but I thought it was a cute idea, and this leads perfectly into holidays. I really like making small gifts that I can give away for the holidays to my postal worker, to my water delivery guy, to any clerks that I come across as I'm shopping for the holidays. But I also like making inexpensive gifts that I can buy and upgrade for my friends and family. So these were all items that I got from the 99 cent store and I just added on my Cricut just to make them more personal and upscaled. This is what I'm working on this year. This will be a mocha coffee packet that I'll give out to hopefully some of my friend mail people, but also again, anybody that I interact with through the holidays. Gingerbread houses are huge for me. I had the pleasure of being a stepmom in my younger years. I was married before, and I remember one year I baked full on gingerbread houses. Most kids don't like gingerbread, so from that point forward, I always used graham crackers. And if you're interested in learning how to do this, let me know. I'd be happy to do a video. This has been my most favorite tradition for my kids growing up. We started out the first few years with just five or ten kids, um, and then it would grow. We were up to about a dozen, and then we expanded again, and it was up to about 15. The last big year that we did this, we had over 25 gingerbread houses with kids around. And even though it was a lot of work, and I told myself I would never do it again, the kids had such a great time, and it really is one of my most favorite things that I've gotten to do. But it is not my number one. My number one thing for the holidays that, oh my gosh, I get to be so creative and have fun with, is our elf on the shelf. Now, I had had these as a kid, so you could see these were the first two that I had. And again, I had gotten these from my great aunt who, I think she had gotten these when she was stationed in Germany. I had no idea that they were supposed to do anything. They were just decorations for me. But when Elf on the Shelf came out, ours got active. They would bring us our Christmas tree as a surprise. We would have them bring us presents and do just sweet things. And then we got mischief. Now, here's how we got mischief. We were at an antique swap meet and there was a booth selling all of these elves. Now, the rule in our house was you couldn't touch the elves or they would lose their magic. They would pop around the house and check up on you. They might leave little treats and little notes, but when my youngest saw this booth of elves, she just about burst into tears because of all of these elves that didn't have a home. 
and she's begging me, Mommy, can we save them all? And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I cannot handle doing any more with elves. So we picked out one and we took it home to adopt it. And within a couple of days, it brought a note from Santa explaining, thank you for homing this elf. It was not welcomed at its last house because of some things that it did. Its name was Miss Chiff. Miss Chiff. This gave me the perfect opportunity because until then, our elves had been very well behaved and never did anything wrong. Miss Chiff wasn't anything like that. You guys, I had so much fun coming up with ideas. Pinterest is a great resource for crazy things. If you have elves for your nieces, nephews, children, grandchildren, neighbors, so in the beginning, Mischief just did some minor things. She stole my phone and she took Elfies with all of us while we were sleeping in some of our decor. That wasn't so bad. You know, my kids thought it was kind of cute. Oh, maybe that's why Mischief got rehomed. Mischief would leave her toys out while playing with our other dolls. Again, this was the beginning stages and I was kind of pushing the envelope. And then as my kids got older, I got to start doing more. So Mischief started defacing photos and maybe leaving messes in the kitchen, um, redecorating our tree with our underwear, which was very naughty. And then the kids were old enough that I thought, okay, I only have a year or two more left of this before they may or may not believe in Santa and Christmas magic anymore. So I went to town. Mischief wrapped our toilet so we couldn't go potty, which was hysterical to me, and my kids got the biggest kick out of it. But sometimes Mischief would wrap the bedroom door and involve the other elves into being nasty. But the final, final thing that I did with the elves, because I knew this was my last year with the kids, and the volume unfortunately is bad on this. I lost the original video, but I was able to pull it down from when I posted it on Facebook. My kids came home, and all of our elves had arranged furniture in front of the kids' laptop, and they were watching videos on how to make snowflakes. That's pretty innocent. They left us some instructions on please decorate with these, but here was the fun part. My daughter's showing you right now. Mischief had wrapped their bunk beds completely in wrapping paper. This blew my kids' minds, and it wasn't until they discovered all of the secrets of Santa, they were like, how did you pull that off? I don't know how I did some of these things because my kids were with me almost all of the time, but on rare occasions, I would leave work just a little bit early so that I could pull off doing these things. So for me to get home in enough time to pull off wrapping this and still race to pick them up truly was some Christmas magic. But these really were my best memories and some of my favorite things. So I hope you get a kick out of this. Now I know all of these weren't Christmas projects or Halloween projects, but they really are the things that have brought me the most joy over the years. And I'm really hopeful that as my kids get older and start families of their own, that some of these might spark some ideas for them to pass on to their kids. I am super excited about going into November for a couple of reasons. I get to do the advent calendars for you guys. I'll be doing one a week to count down to December 1st. My hope is you'll have time to get everything ready for December 1st when your holidays might start. I'm also going to be finishing up the virtual organizing, so I've got a compilation video coming of some smaller projects that I did with viewers, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. I have a ton <laughs> of friend mail that I need to get out for November, so there's still some time. I'll be doing one or two more before the end of the year, so if you haven't signed up for my friend mail, please make sure to check out that information in the description below. But here's the big one. It's my birthday month, yay! And I know this is forward and you're not supposed to do this, but I'm asking for a gift from you. The holidays mean a lot to me. Um, not about the getting, I'm very much about the magic of Christmas and what you can give. So for my birthday, I have a really big request from you. I am asking that you do some random act of kindness. It doesn't need to be monetary, but if you have the ability to do that, buy somebody's coffee, buy somebody their lunch, take some food over to a neighbor who otherwise hasn't been able to get out during these lockdown times. Um, it could be something small. Go out of your way to pick up the mail for a neighbor, bring in their trash cans, but whatever it is that you do, my request for my gift after you do it, let me know. Leave a comment about what you did. Um, I have found that whenever the holidays come, and this is what I love, and I almost get choked up about it, but um, 
What I love is the feeling that I get, and I don't know why I don't do it all year. I think I get busy and I kind of forget, but the holidays, my full focus is on giving. Uh, from Thanksgiving all the way through the end of Christmas. It's what truly warms my heart. It's what makes me the happiest. I've raised my kids to think about what can we give this year? Yes, I, of course, I like to give gifts as well, but what can we as a family give to people who don't have anything? And uh, it's what makes me the happiest. So if you're so inclined, if you've been a longtime viewer and you would like to do something to celebrate my 54th birthday, pay it forward to someone else and let me know what you did. And I will be so appreciative of that. Anyway, ugh, thank you so much for everything. You guys, I am almost at 60,000 subscribers. As I have mentioned before, my goal is to hit 100,000. I'm hoping to maybe hit that by spring or summer. And it's just because I want that silly silver play button. I didn't know how competitive I was until I started seeing other YouTubers that it started about the same time as me. They've already hit them. Slow and steady wins the race. I am so happy with the direction that my channel is going because I'm getting to do a lot more interactive with you with virtually organizing and helping viewers out who couldn't otherwise do that. And that is all because of my Patreon. So special thanks to them. I know I got wordy at the end. I will cut off for now, but thank you so much and I'll see you guys in just a few days. Bye.